Therefore, what else can we do? We simply have to offer our obeisances to him as our master. Clasping that straw between my teeth, falling down on the ground and begging over and over and over. The only prayer that is left in my heart is this, and that is that lifetime after lifetime, I may simply serve the foot dust of Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada. Sadhanaya jivane yasya drishto bhavo daya kramaha raghunatham aham vande dasa Goswami nam prabhu. I offer my homage unto my master. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, by carefully studying his life and his daily practices of the regulative principles of devotional service, one can quickly come to understand the exact scientific sequential process by which one will attain to Prayojana, the topmost states of love of Godhead. Vanchakalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyeva Cha Patitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shiva Sari Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare Navati atmosphere is sufficiently purified. Please open up your ears and we'll try to hear some Sriman Bhagavatam together. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. We're reading from the Sriman Bhagavatam. We're in the sixth canto, we're in chapter two. We're reading about the history of the life of Ajamil. Ajamil delivered by the Vishnu Dudas. We're reading chapter text 40 and 41. Uh, translations and purports by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada. Tato Gune Bhya Atmanam, Vyujyatma Samadhinam, Vyuje Bhagavad Damni, Brahman Yanu Bhavatmani. Tato gune bya atmanam, viyuj atma samadina, yu jay bhagavad damni, brahman yanu bhavat mani, tato gune bya atmanam, viyuj atma samadina, Yu J Bhagavad Dhamni Brahman Yana Bhubatmani Kindly chant. Ramanya Nubhavatmani Tato Gunevya Atmanam Tato Gunevya Atmanam 
From the modes of material nature. Atmanam, the mind. Vyuja, detaching. Atmasamadina, by being fully engaged in devotional service. Yuja, engaged. Bhagavad Dhami, in the form of the Lord. Brahmani, Brahmani, which is Param Brahma, Brahma, not idol worship. Not <laughs> idol worship. Interesting. Anubhava Atmani, Anubhava which is always thought of, beginning from the lotus feet and gradually progressing upwards. And gradually upwards. So now we have instructions of how to take darshan of the deity. You start from the lotus feet, then your eyes can wander upwards from there. Translation. Uh, first, I'm sorry, because we're doing text 40 and 41, I'll first read the uh, text 40 first, and we'll go on to 41. Text 40. Sadhasmin deva sadhana ashino yogam ashitaha pra pratya hitendriya gramo yuj yu yo jamana atmani translation in hardwar ajmil took shelter at a vishnu temple where he executed the process of bhakti yoga he controlled his senses and fully applied his mind in the service of the lord purport the devotees who have joined the hari krishna movement the krishna consciousness movement sorry the devotees who have joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement may live comfortably in our many temples and engage in the devotional service of the Lord. Thus, they can control the mind and senses and achieve the highest success in life. This is the process descending from time immemorial. Learning from the life of Ajmil, we should follow with determination to do whatever is necessary to follow this path. Okay, thank you. Ajamiya fully, wow, what a difference. Whoa. <laughs> this is God speaking. Ajamiya fully engaged in devotional service. This is text 41. Ajamiya fully engaged in devotional service. Thus, he detached his mind from the process of sense gratification and became fu fully absorbed in thinking of the form of the Lord. Purport. If one worships the deity in the temple, one's mind will naturally be absorbed in thought of the Lord in his form. There is no distinction between the form of the Lord and the Lord himself. Therefore, bhakti yoga is the most easy system of yoga. Yogis try to concentrate their minds upon the form of the super soul Vishnu within the heart. But this same objective is easily achieved when one's mind is absorbed in the deity worship in the temple. In every temple, there is a transcendental form of the Lord, and one may easily think of this form by seeing the Lord during Artik, by offering boga, and by constantly thinking of the form of the deity, one becomes a first class yogi. This is the best process of yoga, as confirmed in the Shri, by the Supreme Personality of God in Bhagavad Gita, Yogi Namapi Sarve Sham, Mad Gatanan Taratmana Shradavan Bajate Yomam Same Yutattamo Mataha. Of all yogis, he who always abides in me with great faith, worshiping me. <clears throat> In transcendental loving service, he is the most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all. The first class yogi is he who controls his senses and detaches himself from material activities by always thinking of the form of the Lord. Now, Pratikena Hisaha, nice little Vedanta Sutra aphorism. 
Whenever the deity door is open, I'm not a very Rasika person, I'm more into Tattva than Rasika. So whenever the deity door is open, I say, Prati Kena Hi Sahai. Very easy. Prati Kena Hi Sahai. Together. Prati Kena Hi Sahai. I love these little Vedanta Sutra aphorisms because they're packed, they're powerful. Little tiny phrases that have so much meaning. Tato, Atato, Brahma, Gignasur. Right? Everybody knows this one, of course. <laughs> Atato. Now. Now, now, what, what does the now mean? Now that you have reached the human form of life, it is time to inquire into Brahman, the absolute truth, the supreme personality of Godhead. Anyway, just that word now has so much purport and so much significance, I could speak on it for hours. <laughs> what does now mean? <laughs> so like this, the Vedanta Sutra is filled with powerful aphorisms that are packed with meaning. So, na pratikena hi saha, uh, and I say this every time before the deity door is open. It's not very rasika, but it, it's really helpful. That vigraha is not a symbolic representation of the absolute truth, but that vigraha is the absolute truth himself. Nice little Vedanta Sutra verse when the deity's door opens. There's also a nice little a verse that I like. Bahu uh, Dukam Vyak. It's not Vedanta Sutra, it comes from the Narada Bhakti Sutras. Bahu Dukam Vyak. After sex life, unlimited miseries arise. <laughs> so, whenever the deity doors open, you can say, Pratikena Hi Saha. And ever, whenever the bedroom doors open, you can say, <laughs> you can say, Bahu uh, Dukam Vyak. So different little s sutras to help you get through life. Now here in this purport, this is probably the only chance I get to get to talk on this particular uh, purport on this particular. Uh, 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 pastime, so I have a lot to say and not very much time. So we'll try to, to get it all in. The first thing I wanted to say is um, this is the, uh, in, the, in text 40, it's describing how Ajamil took shelter at a Vishnu temple, temple where he executed the process of bhakti yoga. Okay? There's a kind of a, a freck, fleckless, how do you say, uh, I've met devotees like this, you know, fleckless, a uh, kind of fleckless is probably not great word, but kind of relaxed, a little bit too much on the relaxed side, you know, devotees. They go, oh, you know, well, Ajamil, he chanted the name of Narayan at the time of death, and he went back home, back to Godhead. But did? He chanted Namabas. Now, we'll get into that this, in a, this a little bit later. But he chanted Namabas. But by that chanting, did he go back home, back to Godhead? No. But people say, oh yeah, he just chanted the holy name of Narayan at the end of God, at the, at the end of death, and then he went back home into Godhead. Well, that's not exactly what happened. So I can take it easy, I can relax, I can take the smooth road, and I'll chant Hare Krishna at the end of Godhead, and at the end of my life, and I'll go back to Godhead. Well, good luck doing that, first of all. Because yam yam vapi smaram bhavam ta jatyanti kalevaram tam tam levaiti kunteya saratad bhava bhavi taha. Whatever state of being one remembers at the time of death, to that state he will attain without fail. And where does the heart go at the time of death? To that thing you're most attached to. And you can't help it. That's what it'll go to. So if you think that it's an easy thing to chant Hare Krishna at a time of death, well, man, first you have to develop a little bit of attachment <laughs> to the name. And then maybe if God is merciful to you and if you are properly purified, you can chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra at the time of death. But anyway, besides that fact, it says here, um, so he went to a... So, so it's not that Ajamil went back home, back to Godhead by chanting out the, calling out the name of his son Narayana. He, um, he got a uh, reprieve. He was saved by the bell. He got a little bit of time, some extra time to 
consider his consideration. This was the great mercy of the Lord. Okay? And then, this, pro this, this section we're, we're, we're hearing right now is what happened afterwards. After his, uh, his shocking experience in the, on the astral plane, if you will. <laughs> on the astral plane. So anyway, there's one thing I wanted to point out. This is the process descending from time memorial. Learning from the life of Adramiel, we should bow with determination to do what, what is necessary to follow this path. In other words, the thing we shouldn't learn from the life of Adramiel is, you know, we can just relax and pull on out, you know, because, you, know, you know, at the end we'll just chant Hare Krishna and then it'll be, everything will be clean and we'll be able to go back, go, we'll go, go back to Godhead like it's a cakewalk, you know. We shouldn't do like this. The second thing that comes to me to mind in this 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 process is descending from time immemorial. There's a very nice verse in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. It says, "Evam nyatva kritam uh, karma purvayer." Purvayer means as the ancients have done, as the old the old school people have done. We have new school and old school. You should follow the old school people. <laughs> As the old school people have done, as the ancients have done. Evam nyatva kritam kava purvayer api mumukshubihi kudu karmaiva tasmatam. And then to make it really drive it home, purvai pravataram. Purvai pravataram means you should follow the old people as the, uh, the, the, the ancients, as the exactly, uh, you should follow in their footsteps. Exactly as they did, you should do. Provide pravatatam, pravataram, kritam. You should do your, your duty, your work, as actually, exactly as they did. So, uh, this is the idea uh, that's being transmitted here. As uh, the, the verse goes, um, as the liberated souls in the ancient days acted with this understanding of my transcendental nature, uh, so, she, so, Arjuna, you should do your duty following in their footsteps. So as Ajamil do, we, has done, we should also do, because we are all little Ajamils. And the thing is, is so what did Ajamil do? The first thing is, is we heard, is, is, it was about his de degradation. The second thing we heard about was his near damnation. Damn to hell. <laughs> Okay, his near damnation, and he was saved by the chin, the whisker of his chinny chin chin. Okay, he was saved by the bell. So there was near damnation, and then after that intense experience of near damnation, and it was very intense, <laughs> what was the next thing that happened? There was consideration. Consideration is uh, described right here in a previous verse. Uh, he says, um, he says, what does he say? He, this is, this is, was, he says, this is very interesting. Now listen to this carefully, because remember, he had this intense experience in, a, in an altered state of consciousness while he was in the process of dying. Or, uh, and then it says here, when he woke up from this situation, woke up from his heart attack or near-death experiment, spirit, spirit, ex, uh, experience, he says, was this a dream? This is in Canto 6, Chapter 2, Text 30. He says, was this a dream I saw? Or was it reality? <laughs> no, Ajamil, the dream is what you're living. The reality is what you saw. <laughs> okay? The dream is what we're living right now in this world. Adrishtam drishtavam nakshet bhuttam svapnavad. Svapnavad means like a dream. Bhuttam svapnavad anyata. Bhuktam bhavad bhavishyad shcha suktam. Suktam means a real dream, deep dream. Suktam saga raho rataha. Everything that exists in time in this material world, which includes past, present, and future, is merely a dream. This is the secret teachings of all the Vedic literatures. Huh? So let's look around in this room. What exists in time? This book is ex exist in time, even though it's transcendental knowledge, and I put my head on it. My glasses exist in time. My body exists in time. My gender exists in time. My mind exists in time. This, 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 
this, this building itself exists in time and it will crumble into nothing. So what exists in time? Everything we see, everything we experience. My emotions exist in time. My love exists in time. My tears exist in time. <laughs> we think those are real, real. Okay, okay, I agree. Maybe the table isn't real and it's going to go down into nothing. Nasa to vegetaria babo. Okay? The table is going to, everything is going to disappear. But my emotions are real. That's real. No. Everything that exists in time which includes past, present, and future, is nothing but a dream. This is the secret teachings of all the Vedic religions. So, so, Nasato vijite bhavo, na bhavo vijite sataha ubayo api drishto natas tvanayos tatpadarshinaha. Those who have seasons of the truth have concluded of the non-existent, the material body, or anything that is made out of matter, even subtle matter. Okay? Uh, the, those who have seasons of the truth have concluded that, uh, the, uh, that the material body never has any endurance. And the soul, it's the, the spirit, never has any cessation. So if we look around this room, what is real? Are you real? Are you real? <laughs> what is real in this room? What doesn't exist in time in this room? Okay, who, speak louder, please. Soul. Yeah, the soul doesn't exist in time. Not, you know, So the soul is the only real thing in this room. Is that all? Okay, that's a real thing. Because why is the holy name a real thing? Because it's Krishna. So there's two things that are real in this room. That means that are beyond time. The soul and God. What? Speak up. Temple. Okay. The temple is real because it's real in the sense that as long when matter is used in the service of God, then it, be, it, it, it attain, retains its spiritual nature. But it's not real in the sense that, it's, that this particular temple right here, there'll come a time where this temple will, 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 will be pounded into dust. Trust me. Trust me on that one. No matter how hard we try. So anyway, so that's what's real. So, um, so Arjami will say, was this a dream I saw or was it reality? So this is called consideration. Ajamil could have walked away from the whole thing and caught, gone on with his, uh, with his party life. He had to think about it deeply after his experience. Was this a dream? Was it real? I saw four, four I saw a fearsome men with ropes in their hands coming to arrest me and they tried to drag me away. Where have they gone? And where have those four liberated and very beautiful persons gone? It, 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 was that real? What I experienced was that real? No, Ajamil. The, the, the dream is your wife and your child and your house and your... Uh, the reality is those four men who appeared. That's the real reality. So, so this is... So he had so consideration. He had to consider, am I going to take this seriously, this vision, this experience, this near-death experience that I had? Am I going to take it seriously? That's consideration. And he took it seriously. And then finally, he said, uh, the next thing that came after consideration was what? Lamentation. So we have degradation, near damnation, consideration, and now lamentation. Okay? What, what have I done with my life? How have I wasted my life? I was trained very nicely as a child in brahminical activities and devotional service and, and worship of God and I just blew it all away. I spent 68 years of my life in sin, sin after sin after sin and then comes lamentation. Okay? Very good thing, lamentation. Don't always think that devotional service means la, 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 I'm happy. 
Sometimes devotional service also means great regret, great lamentation. And then finally, after the lamentation, what comes next? Uh, lamentation, uh, consideration, lamentation, then comes something very important, rectification. <laughs> okay? So the thing is, uh, it's nice to feel sorry for your sins. That's a nice thing. Okay, we'll take that. But there's no real atonement unless there's rectification. Okay? And the rectification is what we're hearing about right now. He went to the Vishnu temple. He began to perform serious bhakti yoga. Now, a lot of people say the word... Uh, 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 and this is, the, this is the example we should follow. Not the other example that, you know, the, not the damnation, not the degradation example. And the, the, you know, this is the example that, that's being presented here by this Ajamil story. Now, well, there's been a lot of confusion in classes. I want to clear up some kind of confusion. Uh, uh, you know, people are asking, did Ajamil chant Purnam when he called out his son Narayana? There's been that confusion here in the class. Did, uh, did, was it pure chanting? Uh, 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 did he get liberation? So I'm, uh, I want to uh, first of all read to you uh, what actual, oh God, I hope I didn't lose the page. Uh, I want to read, read to you what actual liberation is. Oh, by the way, I forgot one. Darn it. Sometimes my brain doesn't work. So there's, there was damnation. <laughs> Then there was, uh, I'm sorry, there was degradation. Then there was near damnation, saved by the bell. Then there was consideration. Then there was rectification. And finally, there's one more. And then there was ascension. <laughs> he ascended into heaven. He ascended into Vaikuntha. That's the perfection. Not that he got free from sinful life. And he didn't, he got, he, he, he got excused from a trip to hell. Big deal. We've been there a million times and we've been up here again and we've been down there and up and up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. So this is the real, uh, real liberation, ascension. And uh, I'll read about this. This is in uh, the Chaitanya Charitamita. Uh, Lord Chaitanya is giving seven verses. Uh, defeating in personal philosophy. And this is one of the verses that he quotes. Uh, it's, of course, a verse from the Sriman Bhagavatam 2.10.6. It's spoken by uh, 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 Lord Brahma to his son Nardamuni. So the verse goes, Niroda shanusha yanam atmana saha shakti vihi muktir hitvan yataru vamsarupena This is the uh, liberation. Sarupena so this is the translation. This is actually what liberation means. Anybody want to know what actual liberation means? Raise your hand. <laughs> okay. All right. This is actual liberation as defined by both Lord Brahma and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I think we can take it seriously. Don't you? What do you think? Okay. So this is actual liberation. So at the living entities and other potencies merge into Mahavishnu as the Lord lies down and rises up, destroys the cosmic manifestation. Liberation means being situated in one's eternal, original form after giving up the changeable, gross, and subtle bodies. Okay? So real liberation means obtaining Sarup City. Ajamil, by chanting Nambas, did not get that liberation. He got another type of liberation. Ayam, evam sa, vipula vita, sarva dharma. Sarva dharma means he gave up all of his dharma, all of his brahminical activities. Evam vipula vita, evam sa, he, sa, vipula vita. He gave up all of his brahminical activities. Dasyaha, patihi, patiho, garya karman, dirty works. Karya Karman. He did dirty works. <laughs> Darya Karman. He married Dasyaha. He married a, uh, a, uh, a, a, a Dasi maidservant, someone way below him in caste. Dasaha, he became her husband, Patihi. 
Uh, he, um, he became patito, very fallen, and then he did garya karman, very dirty works. And then what happened? Because he did very, 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 very dirty works, nipatcha, nira, nipatcha mano niraye. Nipatcha mano means to be carried, nipatcha mano niraye. He was supposed to be carried away to hell. It was his destiny. It was his karma to be carried away. The Yamadudas were not totally wrong. It was his duty. It was his karma. He was supposed to be carried away. Damnation to hellish existence. Why Hatta Vrataha? He killed Hatta Vrataha. He killed all of his Vratas. He killed the regular principles. <laughs> he killed. <laughs> he killed Hatta Vrataha. And so then what happened? Sajja Mukto. Sajja Mukto. He was immediately liberated. Mukto means liberation. Liberated from what? A trip to hell. <laughs> okay? Sajja Mukto Nama. Bhagavan Nama Grinan. Grinan means because he accepts, Prabhupada translates it here as he, he chanted. Nipacha Mano Bhagavan Nama Grinan. Because he accepted the name of Bhagavan Narayana. Huh? So, Evam sa vipala vita sarvadama patyaha pati. Patihi patito garya kamam ni patyama no nirayes. Hatta vrataha sajyao vimukto. Nama Bhagavan Nama Grina. Ajamil was born and he was raised as a young Brahmana boy. But due to bad association, he gave up all of his Brahminical activities. And he gave up all of his Brahminical activities and he killed or destroyed every one of his vows. <laughs> Becoming most fallen, he drank, he stole, and he performed every and all kinds of abominable activities just to keep his wife happy. <laughs> so therefore, his lower class wife. Therefore, he was destined. He had to give up his upper class wife. <laughs> he gave up his upper class wife and accepted lower class wife. So he was destined. It was his destiny to be carried away to hellish conditions by the oriental carriers of Yamaraj. But he was saved. He was rescued simply by the slightest, tiniest glimpse. The slightest, tiniest glimpse of the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. This is power. I'm going to, the next verse right after this verse I, I is one of the most ecstatic verses in this whole chapter and if I recite it to you and your hairs do not stand on an end then you're, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> okay, this verse goes, Mriyamano harir nam nama grinam putro pacharitam pajam ajam yo pyata pyat ajami yo yagad dama so, while chanting at the time of death, Ajamil, he called out the name of his son Narayana. Although his chanting was directed towards his son, he nevertheless ultimately went back home, back to Godhead. Therefore, if one regularly, faithfully, chants the holy name of the Lord where is the doubt Kim Uta where is the doubt that he will attain the spiritual kingdom huh? pretty nice huh <laughs> makes you all of a sudden feel better makes me feel so better <laughs> so where is the doubt just by the slightest glimpse he was free but if you regularly, if you faithfully chant the holy name of the Lord, where is the doubt that you will attain to the spiritual kingdom? 
I have time for one more nice verse. To, to, to. So therefore, this is the uh, 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 liberation that Ajami will get by chanting Nam Bas. And this is directly said very, very, in the very beginning when the Yamadudas begin to instruct the Vishnu Dudas, they, they recite the following verse. They, uh, they say, Ayam hi kritta nirve show. They say, this man, Ayam means this man. He kritta, he's already done all the piety. They're saying to the Yamadudas, he, this man, Ajamil, he has already done sufficient piety. The Yamadudas are going, wait a second, wait a second. You know, they're checking their list. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. The Yama Dutas are coming to town. Hey, they see you when you're sleeping. They know when you're awake. They know if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. <laughs> so they're looking at their list. They're checking their list. They're checking it twice. Huh? Hey, they said, what crit has this man done? Okay? Ayami Kritta. But the Yamadura is saying, no, Ayami Kritta Nirve show. He's already done the crit. And not only has he done the crit, then this is very even more mind blowing. He says, Ayam I Nitya Vir Nirve show. Janma, hundreds and millions of births. Janma, Kotyam, Asama, P. He's done enough crit for millions of births. Why? Ayam hi kritta nirve sho janma kocham samati yad vyajahara viva so namaswas yayanam hari he. This Ajman Ajamil, he has already atoned for all of his sinful activities. Indeed, he has atoned not only for sins performed in one life, but for those sins performed in many, many millions of lives. How many believe? <laughs> huh? Because in a very helpless condition, he called out the name Narayana. Although he did not chant purely, chant purely means the kind of chanting that gets you liberation, where you get your eternal spiritual form. That means praying Nam. Okay? He chanted. Uh, 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 he chanted um, Nama Pyas. He didn't chant pure name. He chanted pure enough. <laughs> pure enough to get out of a trip to hell. Okay, but not pure enough to get his spiritual body. He had to go to Hardwar to do that. Okay, try to read the, read the Shastras carefully, please. So, so he was, um, so be simply because he chanted, in the, although he did not chant purely, this is what the Yamadudas, uh, the Vishnu Dudas are saying. He chanted without offense. And therefore, he's now free and he is eligible for liberation. Namnosti Yavati Shakti. Shakti means great power. The name has great power. Namnosti Yavati Shakti. Papa Nirharaya Hare He. Tadvat kartum na shaknoti. Na shakto means that no one will be able to sin fast enough. Nam tadvat, if you try tadvat kartum to do sins fast, as fast as you can. I'm going to run around and do as many sins as I can. Let's see, you know. <laughs> you can't do them fast enough. Tam dosti tavati shakti papa nirahani hari. Tabakatum no shakta ti patakam patakam pataki naraha. This patakam pataki is the Sanskrit of equivalent we say in English, the most sinful of all sinners. So this is patakam pataki naraha, a man who is the most sinful of all sinners. So the holy name of Lord Hari, the holy name of God, it possesses such potency, it possesses such power. That even if chanted only once, it can uh, it can clean away, it can eradicate more sinful reactions than even 
the most sinful of all sinners is able to commit. Harinam Sankirtan Ki, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra Ki, everyone say Hari. All right, you're now pure, <laughs> at least pure enough that you won't go to hell. <laughs> Going back to Godhead is another story. Okay, we'll stop there. Uh, anybody who would like to leave is allowed to leave and take a little rest. And we got some questions here. Go ahead, Mataji. I'm a little bit confused. You said that Ajahn did not get excused from hell by chanting the Narayan once at the time of death. He did get excused from hell. From he the did get excused. Yeah, yes, yes, okay. he <laughs> did. Yeah, I didn't say, I might have said did not, did not in my enthusiasm as I'm speaking, because I, my tongue sometimes trips over my brain, or sometimes my brain trips over my tongue. So I might have said did not, but no, he did get a, he, get, did, he got excused from hell by Namabas chanting. By Namadas chanting, you clean up all your sinful reactions. Go ahead. Hare Krishna. Hare Thank Krishna. you so much for your lecture. Thank you. Um, there is one thing which uh, I remember when you were speaking about what is real in this room and what is not real. And then I remember Prabhupada, when he used argument against Mayavad philosophy, then he says, that because Brahman is real, then the creation is also real. And then he gives the explanation that you have a cotton. Okay. And then cotton is one thing, and then you take the thread. Okay. So if the thread is not okay. real or cotton, then then it's kind of illogical. So okay, so I, I this okay, nice question, it's it's correct. The creation when 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 we say the creation is not real, the Vaishnavas it's real. It's a real dream. <laughs> it's the dream of Mahavishnu. Now you may say that's, that's a... Uh, when you dream at night, is it real? You go to bed and you dream you're being eaten by a lion. Is it real? It's not... As soon as you wake up, is it real? You go, no, no, it's useless. It's, it's, this is, that wasn't reality, that was a dream. Right? But still, you can't say the dream is nothing or false. You can just say that it was temporary and illusory. So in that sense, the material world is a dream. It's not real because it's temporary and illusory. It is a real thing, just like a dream is a real thing. It's some kind of, of, of how do you say, things, uh, you know, the whole brain is doing stuff while you're dreaming, you know. It's something, you know. So you can't say it doesn't exist. It's not false. It does exist. But the thing is, it's not real in the sense that it's temporary and illusory. Are you a woman? Temporarily, yes. Yeah, okay, very well. Now, you are a woman. Right now, are you going to be a woman in 60 years from now? Let me say you're about... 35, 40 or something, in 60 years you'll probably be dead. Then what are you going to be? Just say you're dead. Are you going to be a woman? Maybe, maybe not. I'm a man right now. I'm in a man's body. I'm a man. I'm, I got a lot of man stuff in me, man, you know? I'm like saturated with man stuff. But I could very easily become a woman in my next life. Easily. Wrong, one wrong turn, <laughs> or one right turn, it depends. Maybe the women think they're superior. They may be superior in some ways. But anyway, and then we could easily go in the other, we could be demigods, we could be dogs, we could be worms in stool, and we can be tortured. We can be, tor be down in the hellish planets being tortured in our subtle body. So then that way it's illusory, not that it doesn't exist. You're dreaming right now, you're a, you're a woman, I'm dreaming right now, I'm a man. We're dreaming, we're human beings. <laughs> we're not even, even that's not eternal. So in that sense, it's a dream, it's illusory. Okay, is that okay? Okay, anyone else? We'll go, we, got, we got five minutes of nine. Okay. Okay. Are you told that we should read, read the scriptures carefully? 
So can you give some guidance for how can we read? Because we read Prabhupada books, but we are not able to get the contents. Say that again very slowly and with as little accent as possible. <laughs> yeah, you, so you told that uh, we should read Prabhupada books and scriptures carefully. Yes, read Prabhupada's books as deeply and as carefully as possible. Yes. But uh, as usually, uh, usually we do that and we are not able to get the contents. You know, so yeah. So how can we do that? Careful reading. You know, when you get... Anyway. Uh, you know, the way I do it, I, I just read them over and 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 over again. I'm not so good at reading, but I read a lot. You know, I, and every day I, I read the books for like two or three hours, or two hours, you know, an hour. I, I, you know, my roommate lives with me. Go ahead, tell them. How often am I in front of the books? Yeah, yeah, I'm always reading the books. I'm reading, I'm reading them, I'm memorizing them, I'm trying to... I, I'm not really good at, you know, I'm not a very prayerful guy, I'm not very deep. You know, I, you know I'm not going to go, oh, I'm going to deeply meditate on this verse. You know, <laughs> no, I'm going to read the Bhagavatam. That's not my style. I just open it up and start reading it, you know what I'm saying, because I'm a suitor truck driver from America. So I just read, okay, you know, and, I, and but then if you read them over and over and over and over and over again, you know what I do? I read the Bhagavad Gita, then I read the Nectar of Devotion, then I read uh, the Sriman Bhagavatam. Then I read the Chaitanya Charitamrita, and then I read the Chaitanya Bhagavat. And then I read. Then I start over again, and I just go around and around and around and around. Those five books. If you read those five books, man, you got it all. Just read them constantly. Here's another thing. Don't have a lot of other books in your house. You know, stay off the internet a little bit more. Stop watching movies so much. <laughs> but anyway, you know, like just sit down, you know, sit down in front of your, sit down and start reading. It's not so hard. Well, how do we do it? You open up the, here, I'll show you how you do it. <laughs> Very simple. You, for me, if you're old like me, 60, you take your glasses, you put them on. Okay? <laughs> then you open up the book and you go, okay, explanations of the Atma Rama verse, Jesus Christ, what is this? 60, what explanations, excuse me, Lord Jesus. Wherever you sit, wherever you are, please forgive me. But anyway, I invoked your name, and I know I'm, I'm, please forgive me, please. I'm just joking, okay? And sometimes in joking, we go over. Okay, so explanations of the Atma Rama verse. Man, wow, well, no, the Atma Rama verse. I know what that is. That's that verse that they're always talking about. And they're saying they keep on explaining it in a hundred different ways, and thirty different ways, and ninety different ways, and fifteen different ways. Oh God! But I mean, it's supposed to be a really important verse, so I guess I'll read it. And then you start at verse one. All glorious to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who acted as the eastern horizon, where the sun of the Atmarama verse rose. Oh, you say to yourself, this is poetry. <laughs> oh, uh, Vishwanath, um, uh, Krishnanath Kaviraj is, is being poetical, okay? He manifests its rays in the form of different meanings and thus eradicated the darkness of this material world. May he protect the universe. That's nice. <laughs> All glories to Lord Chaitanya. Then you just keep on going. And then you read one, you know, I, I can handle about 15, 20 minutes of that, you know? You know, maybe 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes of that, and then I gotta, then I gotta go and uh, offer some, some, uh, something I shouldn't be eating, and then I gotta go eat it. You know, I mean, you know, and, and uh, my spiritual master, Satsurup Maharaj, told me, His His Holiness uh, Satsurup Das Goswami told me many, many, many years ago, is when you get tired of one type of devotional service, then you go on to another. And then when you get tired of that devotional service, then you go on to another. So you get tired of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Krishna. Oh, yeah, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Okay, I gotta go find a kid. Though. Then you go find a kid. Okay, I can't take it anymore. I gotta, I gotta read a little bit. Then you read a little bit. I can't take it anymore. Then I'll go to the Ganga. Yeah, that's a good one. Go to the Ganga. I'll go to the, oh yeah, that's great. <laughs> And then you can't take it anymore. Maybe I'll go to the Prashadam uh, booth. Yeah, the Prashadam booth. That'll do it for me. 
And then you just keep on going. Just like a materialist goes from one sense gratificatory activity to another. He watches television. Oh, a movie. Blah, blah. Oh, let's go to the sports game. Oh, ice cream. Oh, beer. Oh, you know, he goes from one sense gratificatory activity to the other. We do the same thing, except instead of going from one sense gratificatory activity to another, you just go from one act that devotional activity to another. You get tired of one, let's go look at the deity in the temple. You get tired of looking at the deity in the temple, let's go take a bath in the Ganga. You get tired of taking a bath in the Ganga, let's go to the Hari Nam party, huh? Huh? Yeah, it's hard to get a people to come to the Hari Nam party. By the way, an announcement for everybody. <laughs> Today, the Hari Nam party is distributing eight pots of Kitri to the local people here in Sri Dham Mayapur. We are leaving at three o'clock from the front gate. And if you come, you will... Uh, I guarantee you it will be better than any other thing that you have planned for that time. Okay, just come. And you don't have to even work. That's the incredible glory of, Shuma, of Mayapur Dham. That's what's mind-blowing. That's why it's, you don't even have to work at it. You know what happened to me this morning? Okay, I'm going over time now. But you know what happened to me this morning? I walked through fog. What kind of fog was it? What? Dense. And where was it from? Ah. I got up this morning and I walked through fog. Wake up, brothers and sisters. You know why? Because according to Shastra, it says that the Ganga fog, if you walk in Ganga fog, it's the same as walking of, as bathing in the Ganga itself. It's equal to bathing in the Ganga itself, walking through Ganga fog. And you know what? I'm a Westerner from the United States of America, man, and I have a pr I'm not really that so clean. My roommates can tell you that's the truth. But the thing is, is like it's, I'm not so, I'm still so a little finicky. So it's really hard for me to take a, a, a you know, dip my hand. I'll, I'll bathe in the Ganga. I bathe in the Ganga quite often. But, you know, doing this thing where you take the Ganga and you sip it. You know that thing? You see the Indians doing it? I go, no, 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 you know? You know, I don't really want to get that sick. <laughs> you know, I'm, I mean, I know Ganga is pure, but, you know, you just might hit that wrong spot of somebody's urine coming down the Ganga. You know, you know so you don't want to, you know, you know, I just can't do it. You know what I'm saying? I'll bathe in it. Sure, you know, bathe, bathe, bathe. Let it wash over me, bathe it. But, you know, doing the sipping thing, man, you know, is not me. You know, I just can't do it. So, you know, the thing is, is what happens when the Ganga fog comes? This is what I do. You want to know what I do? I go like this. And when I walk through the Ganga fog, man, I breathe in like you can't breathe, believe. I breathe it deep down into my body, man. You think I'm stupid? <laughs> She's right there, right in front of you. All you got to do is breathe, for God's sakes. That's my poor, you understand? You just got to breathe. So I breathe in. I you know, when the fog is there, and I love it when it's foggy out, I go, wow, because I can't sip her, because I'm just too American. But the thing is, is, I can breathe her in, so I breathe her in, you know, and I love, I love taking my Japa Mala and just walking around the campus when it's foggy like this, and Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, you know, I get her inside me. A million times better than sipping her, I think. So, uh, where, where, how did I get onto that? Yeah, oh yeah. So, the Harinam party is there. You don't have to do a darn thing. All you have to do is get up around quarter of three and walk to the front gate. <laughs> That's all you have to do. 
I come to this mor morning program every single morning and I look at the astounding deity worship like the other day when we had the Pushpanjali, you know, all the women were working, you know, and they worked so hard and in the, the you know, and I was just so blown away by that, 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 that darshan, you know, I mean, you know, you know, Cupid personified, you know, <laughs> and Radharani, what a queen she looked like, what a queen, and then, my favorite, uh, Sudevi, she even looked more queenly than Radharani, which is like really hard, but yesterday, the other day, she was even looking like more of a queen than Radharani, but don't tell Radharani that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you know, I don't do a thing. I just show up. We got hundreds of people here are working on it like you can't believe, but I don't do a thing. I just show up. That's my approach. So we should move our bodies, we should move our bodies through Mayapur a little bit awake, please. Start thinking about it a little bit more deeply. Okay, I've really gone over time, it's five after nine, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Srila Prabhupada Ki.